Hello everyone, welcome to our fireside chat today. I'm Sarah Rasmussen, I'm the new artistic director here at McCarter Theatre Center on the beautiful Princeton University campus. And joining me today is Kathy Clackenbrick from Jam and Crepes, a very beloved uh, restaurant cafe here in Princeton on Nassau Street. Welcome Kathy, we're so glad you're here. Thanks. And Jam and Crepes has also been a sponsor of many of these um, fireside chats, so thank you for that as well. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, you gather people around food and the love of food. We gather people around art here. What do you love about, about food in the community and, and having a space for people to really gather and enjoy it? I think for me, food is a meeting place, right? And just like theater is, it kind of brings people together. I love the conversation that happens around food. And I think people are very comfortable when they've had something to eat, um, maybe something to drink. Um, and then I think the energy. I, I find having people in my space and, and presenting and uh, preparing food for people is incredibly gratifying. And it's yeah. just watching them enjoy it and then... Um, uh, in my house, it inevitably talks, we talk about the food itself. <laughs> I would say probably at least half the meal is like talking about the flavors, the experience, the process, and inevitably, yes, the cleanup. So, <laughs> um, so but yeah, so I just, I, I think it's the energy. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really interesting. So when COVID rolled through, uh, we, we kept our doors open the whole time. It was a skeleton crew. But the thing that I noticed the most was the flatness at first. And it was mm. because we didn't have the guests in our space. Yeah. And we really, as a team, had to kind of figure out how do we recreate that energy? Mm -hmm. um, because we realized just how much we thrived on that as yeah. a business and I think as individuals. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, you know, I'm really happy to say that, you know, we've definitely been picking up momentum and we have more energy and space and, and we've learned how to create that energy ourselves. But um, I think that's that's a big part of it for me. Yeah, that's nothing really replaces that buzz that happens when yeah. you have yeah. people coming together. Yeah. For so many of our folks watching will know and love jam and crepes, but for those who don't, can you tell us a little bit about about the food you create? I mean, you talk about food as art, so tell us a little bit about your art form. Yeah, I, I mean, so for, uh, so it's myself and two other partners, uh, Kim and Amin Risk, and mm -hmm. um, you know, we started the business initially just at farmer's markets, and uh, we knew each other socially, and we were all committed to the concepts of sustainability, and how oh, do we bring that to the table? Because all of us love to cook, and we all love to eat. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to try a business, and I suppose mm -hmm. you could call it a second chapter in our lives. And so um, pulling the business together was a real, um, um, I, the creativity it drew on to, to pull this together, um, develop a business plan, stretch ourselves in ways that we had not gone before, mm -hmm. um, and then watch it unfold mm -hmm. uh, was so rewarding. And so we always, our mission statement has always been farm to table. So Kim was uh, very much involved and still is with the farmer mar farmer's market mm -hmm. community. Um, I had um, a lot of emphasis and audited tons of classes over the university in the environmental sciences. Oh, amazing. And, and so, yeah, so yeah. it was just kind of like we each had um, a different area of interest in sustainability, but it was all focusing around food. Mm -hmm. And so everything we do now has... Um, has to do when we come up with a menu idea it's like how can we preserve the season and mm. it has to be as locally sourced as we can make it and then trying to create new and creative flavors um, that really speak to just just all the different things that are grown in New Jersey yes itself. which is incredible right? I mean I've only been here for a couple of months but I've just been so wowed by um, what an amazing, yeah, yeah, garden farm community it is. Yeah, it's really yeah. The number of farms is, is amazing, and yeah. just beautiful countryside to roll out to, and uh, and especially, um, I think what I find so exciting is when we're at the store, the number of small farmers that will come in 
truly with their baskets of stuff that oh. they have from their, their uh, fields, and they want us to try something. Yes. Between mushrooms, different kinds of uh, ve seasonal vegetables, tomatoes, you know, you'll get that phone call, I have 70 pounds of apricots that I can't sell. <laughs> you know, it's like somebody driving out of the Pennsylvania to get yes. them. And I love that energy. It's yes. like, okay, so people, are, they don't want to waste what they have, and they recognize the value, and, yes. and they see us as a vehicle to do something creative with it. What can people do to help support small businesses, right? What do you think yeah. is the most important advocacy right now? Yeah, I think, you know, the most important thing is to, if you think of something you need, whether it's food, clothing, paper products, um, pens, we actually have all of those resources in town mm -hmm. between um, Shop uh, Small. Na Nassau, <laughs> Shop Small, yeah. between Nassau and the shopping center. And just... Take the time, put your mask on, go for a walk, drive into town, mm -hmm. and go to the shop and, and purchase your product there. And I will tell you, the, the shop owners are incredibly appreciative of that. You know, with the holidays coming, I know people are, are trying to think about what they can do. Maybe people are scaling back holidays. Go through town and see what, see what the vendors have um, yes. and really support them gift cards they can never go out of style and that helps them a lot especially in these in these times where cash flow is tighter yeah oh and you know what actually paying paying cash <laughs> good to know <laughs> it's you know it's and and, and, it's, and it's a real challenge right because we're trying to do a contactless uh, yes. point of exchange yeah and that is important to yes. do um but if you can pay in cash and you're comfortable with that it is welcomed because it reduces the fees that um, businesses have to pay Yes. As McCarter thinks about how we come back in this new chapter post-pandemic, hopefully sooner rather than later, are, are there ways that you'd like to see arts organizations like McCarter engaged in, in the community and, and how it comes out of this? Well, I think, I think what you're doing right now is actually a really great start. And I, um, I, I'm on another uh, a board in town and they were looking at kind of how are they going to expand themselves their fundraising capabilities virtually and and I, I recommended that they look at what you guys are doing because that whole Christmas Carol in a box yes I think is an amazing concept and oh so thank you you're taking the arts and you're really encouraging people to also incorporate other resources mm -hmm. small businesses in the community so I think you guys are actually on the right track <laughs> oh, and you're good. you're being a leader in that way and then you're pulling in and allowing other smaller businesses to piggyback along with what yeah. you're doing because it's also interconnected right yeah. we know as arts organizations we always need fabulous restaurants for people to go to before or after yeah. and likewise we know arts drive traffic to um, yeah. to so many other places yeah. so um, being newish to town still with, with little kids, what are some of your favorite aspects of Princeton that I should know about? Oh, wow. I know um, that's probably a hard one. <laughs> it, is, it is a hard one, but, um, you know, there's so many wonderful things to do outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the Princeton Merchants Association had just done a promotion on the back of Edible uh, Jersey magazine. And it was, uh, the, the layout came out really nice. And what it does is it shows a combination of shopping, dining, and outdoor events, right? So there's the canal, there's the battlefield, uh, there's just just walking through campus itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the cemetery is really interesting. <laughs> I mean, there's so much history yeah. there, right? I mean, and uh, I wouldn't do it at dark, but <laughs> there it is. Things are really old here. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, back in the woods by the Institute, um, mm -hmm. the trails that you can take out to Quaker Bridge Road, past Updike and the historical. Uh, and that farm, the Updike farm is gorgeous. When the sun is, is starting to set, mm. it is just beautiful out there. So I think there's like, there's such a great mix of indoor, outdoor, and kind of doing picnicking with what you're doing outdoors is, yes. is really uh, a nice yes. treat. And a great year to be outdoors as much as possible. It is a right? great year <laughs> and lovely fire. <laughs> lovely fire. But, well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us by the so, fire. And, and thanks for all your support of this programming. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And thank you for being here. Um, it's, you know, uh, we miss you. And, um, but we know you're only going to come back stronger. And, yes. Um,